Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 93 of this RTS tutorial series. In this lesson, we'll finish up our harvester behavior tree. And then in the next video, the final video for this section, we will do our support unit. That said, I want to give a shout out to Namian Games for supporting this channel and helping make this tutorial possible. That said, fire up your editor and let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the editor. And in today's video, we're going to finish out our harvester units behavior tree. So let's pop that open right away and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to duplicate this weight and this move to resource tasks over for our deposit branch here. In fact, we're also going to move this that way so we have a bit of room. And this will be again the third task, our move to building instead of resource. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to set a task to find our resource building and one to deposit our resources. So like before, let's just go ahead and create our task using our blueprint base. Let's pin that into there. Go back to the main editor window and this will be BTT underscore find resource building. And again, I'm gonna move this into our harvester folder there under tasks. Let's pop back into the task itself. And we're gonna replicate some stuff we've done previously in the AI videos, and we're gonna replicate what we have in the harvester branch. Again, we're gonna do an execute receive AI. So receive, oh, I'm actually spelling it right each time now, execute AI. And like before, we're gonna have that smart cast to our harvester unit, again, not to our unit master. And again, I'm gonna say this, you should be comfortable doing this already. Eventually we will stop doing this. I'm not sure when, but it will it will eventually not be the first thing we do in almost every video. All right. The next thing we want to do is we want to get our resource buildings. So we're going to grab our unit reference. We're going to get it. And we already have inside of this get resource buildings. So this creates a list of buildings for us. Plug that into there put a reroute in, plug that reroute into our setter. Let's grab everything, including our reroute, and we'll collapse this down to a macro, and this will be our reference casts. And we'll do execute as usual. I don't need to change it from object, but I like doing that. And then then. All right, so if there is a resource building, what we will do is we will have a branch and if we do not have a resource building, we will just simply set the unit back to being idle. And we're gonna save ourselves some time. We're gonna go to our find resources. We're gonna find that branch, which is this one down here. We're gonna control C it, and we are going to paste it into here. Now you'll notice we have a problem. That is not valid, that is not valid, that is valid. Part of the reason why I use the same name. We are going to create a variable. So right click, create variable for both of these. All right, so now we have three variables in there. Let's just put these into categories real quick. References, even though there only will be one. Enums, again, even though there only will be one. Actually, no, there will be two enums in this. And blackboard key. And there'll be at least two of those as well. So now if there isn't a building, the unit goes back to being idle. Simple stuff. Now, if there is a resource building, what we want to do is we want to get our unit reference and we want to get distances or get distance to resource buildings. We're going to take that, plug that into there. We are going to come off of our unit reference again and we are going to get nearest target. And we're going to pass the distance to buildings into our nearest target. Again, we're replicating what we did in the harvester unit already. And we are going to take our unit reference. So there's no way to not do that neatly without it crossing way too much. We are going to set target building. I'm not sure what building is, but yeah, my typos are fun. That's all I got to say. If you disagree, well, that's on you. 
I'm joking. I hate my typos. They make me sad. All right. With that set, what we're going to do is we are going to replicate something we did in part of the other AI videos, which is setting our building type. So we're going to get our unit reference. We are going to get target building. We are going to get from this the class. So get class. And from our class, we want our class defaults. So get class defaults. And from here, we're going to take from the building name and we're going to do a switch. Plug that into there. Lower that down. And we're going to hide unconnected pins just so it's a bit neater looking and a little bit easier to read. Just move that a bit closer. And we only really care about two of these. So we're going to create an enum which will be our location type enum. Move that into, oh, sorry. Search first for the building names enum. Move that into your enums folder. We're gonna set one on factory or any resource building you have. So we're gonna set that to factory. We'll duplicate this for silo and we'll set it on silo as well. We can ignore the rest. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable, and this will be location type. This will be our Blackboard key selector for that. And again, we need to make sure that both our Blackboard keys can be edited outside of this blueprint. So we're going to grab our location type. We are going to just put that in the middle, actually, there. We're only going to do this once. Set as enum. Plug that into there. Duplicate the set as enum. Plug that into there. Plug the execute into the correct spot. And then we're going to take the return values and plug those into value. And finally, when this is done, we're going to do a finish, execute, and this will be successful. Plug that into there. And there we go. That takes care of finding our building. So we come in, we cast a reference, we then use that reference to find our resource buildings. If there is one, we find the distances, we get the nearest one, we set that as our target. And we only have two buildings to handle resources, which are our factory and our silo. If there is no available building, then we set the unit back to idle and turn off is automated. All right, so let's call that function up, or task up that is, and that is our find resource building so this will just be renamed as find resource building so we don't have to read the btt part and the underscore find resource building i again with the typos there we go we'll set the status to status and location type to location type all right Finally, what we need to do, and what will finish out this for us, is we need to set it so that we can deposit our resources. So we'll do our basic task again. We'll go into here, into the main window, btt underscore deposit resources. We'll move that into our harvester folder under tasks. Go back into the main window, and in here, what we'll do is we will do a receive. Well, I got the I and the E in the right spot, but I skipped the C. It was about, hey, at least I'm doing a new typo. Receive, execute, AI. And just like we did a moment ago, we're going to do the same exact cast of going to our harvester unit, making it a peer cast, promoting it to a variable of unit reference, checking if that reference is valid. If it is valid, we go forward. If it is not valid, then we cast and we set the reference. So next time we come through here, it is valid. Once we've done that, we're gonna grab our unit reference. We are going to deposit resources. That will be both off the is valid and off of the unit reference. Grab everything, including that reroute, minus the start there and that unit reference at the end. And we are going to collapse down to macro. This will be our reference cast. And again, execute unit. And yes, I know I walked through how to do it. 
out loud, but that's just because I'm getting sick of saying the same thing over and over again. And I'm sure you're getting sick of hearing me say the same thing over and over again. All right, with that in place, we're going to put a reroute into here. We are going to replicate, again, what we already have inside of our unit reference. We're going to set our harvested. So set harvested to zero because I've now deposited it. Also, if the resources resource management buildings are full, we just delete what's left over. Pull off of here, and we're going to do our is inventory full setter. So this is the follow-up to the fix that we did in the last video. All right, with that done, we're going to grab off the unit reference again. We are going to get our target building. Now, at this point, remember the unit is inside the building. They have found the building. They have entered it. Now they've deposited their resources. We've reset the unit to pre-deposit. We are going to release single occupant. I'm not sure what the heck I was trying to type there. Move that up there, move that there, put a couple more reroutes in. Pull off of there, plug that reroute into there, and line that up. All we have to do now is tell it we're done. So finish, execute, and we are successful. So this has been a very simple tree for us. And this is our deposit resources. So we'll just name this deposit. All right, we have nothing else to do there. It's literally everything we had to do to get this to work correctly. So let's go ahead, test this out, see if there's any bugs. We'll hit play. There's our unit. We'll set it to do its job. And I will go into our trees like I did earlier. We'll pop this one open. And I'm going to put a breakpoint here. And I will come back after we hit that breakpoint. So I'm going to pause recording once we get this unit back onto screen. Where is that unit? There it is. All right. There we are. When we come back, the unit should actually come up to here where there are trees and try to harvest the trees instead. All right. I will see you guys in a few moments. All right, here we are. We're back in the editor. We can see this is untriggered. Let's remove that breakpoint. And let's hit resume and go here. We can see the unit gets stuck trying to navigate around that. We're going to run to the nearest resource building, which is a factory, since we don't have a silo. We see the unit flicker for a minute. It was going in to drop the resources off and then come back. And I'm not sure what it's... Oh, it's too tired to continue. So... When it's done sleeping, it will come. It, you saw it go to the tree at least. So you saw that it was trying to hit the tree. So we know that part is working. Hopefully the fatigue level drops relatively quickly, but we'll then have the hunger level to worry about. So instead of doing it that way, we know it went to the tree afterwards. What we're going to do is we're just going to open up our unit real quick. Let's go down to our unit. Actually, Go to our unit controller AI. And in here, we're just going to unplug our fatigue and hunger timers. And we're going to run that test again. Do job. Speed that up. And like before, I'm just going to put a breakpoint at the end there. And I will resume the video once this part has gone through and if i can find the damn unit there it is all right i'll resume once that is done see you guys in a moment welcome back as you can see it's paused so here we are we're going to remove that breakpoint and we will hit resume we can see the units running off to find the building you can watch for that unit to flicker there now it's going to run to a tree because the tree is going to be a nearer resource. And it's arrived at the tree. It's now harvesting again. And I we can add another breakpoint here or we could cheat a bit. And we can go... Actually, I was in the right thing. We can go to the start harvesting. We can see that it is currently harvesting at the new resource. So, that said, we have now finished out... It's the wrong window. We've now finished out 
what we need to do for our harvester units to work correctly. So we have a functional AI for our harvester and for our engineer. In the next video, we will start working on our support unit and get our support unit up and running. All right. I'm not sure what I have allegedly selected. There we go, I had that unit selected. Do job. All right, and we'll add a silo in just to make this more interesting. That said, if you wanna make sure you're here for the next video where we start our support unit, go ahead and hit that subscribe and notify icon. And if you wanna help support this channel out, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon or hitting that like button down below. Both really help this channel out. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.